Hello there! Let's see how to go pro with Coral Paint Shop X6 quickly. Leave feedbacks in case you find mistakes in pronunciation. In case you have missed something in this video, watch the beginner tutorial in this show. Let's see how to use the edit workspace. This is more professional than what's seen in the beginner tutorial, since it goes more into deep than the simple adjust one. Let's pick the same photo and have a look on the right. The Learning Center window is very useful to know what a tool does. Keep it open the first times to get help when you need. First of all, you can view your image better using your mouse. Use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out and hold the space down to explore and move throughout the photo anytime. This will be useful when you edit in the future while using other tools. You need to know three groups of buttons in this workspace. The list on the left is basically the list of the main important actions you can do with your image. When you click on one of them, you can see its options revealed on top, right above the Windows list. You can use these to be more precise in your editing. More on top you find the buttons you already had in a Manage and in the Adjust modes. The Save buttons, the Share one and all the ones for the visualization and zoom. Watch the beginner tutorial if you don't know the basis of Paint Shop Pro X6. All the windows you have are called here Palettes and are all listed in the Palettes list above. Make sure to tick the one you are looking for, in case it is closed and not visible. You can keep more images opened at the same time, using the open button and then browsing, differently than with the adjust mode. All images opened are shown one next to the other, right below the buttons on top. Let's edit the image. First thing to do is to crop and rotate the image. Rotate using the quick buttons on top, if necessary. You can crop using the crop button. This is exactly the same one found in the adjust workspace. You may need to flip the image to change its point of view. Just go to image and then to flip vertical or flip horizontal. When the image is ready, you need to improve it. The edit mode is not to enhance photos, for example its lightness or colors. It is meant for editing the image as it is, for example changing subject, the wall background and so on. It is indeed a much deeper transformation for the image. Before going on, it is fundamental to select the image or any of its parts. The third button in the list has all the selection tools this software has, clicking on the small arrow on the right. Let's see them. The selection one is basic, just click and drag to create a rectangle selection area. Over the mouse in and click and drag to move the area. This will bring the selected part outside in a new temporary layer called floated selection in italic that will exist until you finish working on the same selected area. To save a copy of the selection instead, simply click and drag using the pick tool. The copy will be in a raster layer called promoted selection, very useful to save it or hide or delete it when you need. A new area created deletes the previous one. Hold shift down to preserve all the old areas just done. Hold control down to remove the selections. Just include in the area the old ones made. Freehand selections creates an area freehand. Click and do not release to set the contours. When you release the area will be closed auto. Magic Wand selects the area auto 
basing on how the image does change in brightness, contrast and color rapidly. Click once to set an area. You can increase it holding shift down and going on, or delete some parts holding control down instead. Smart Selection Brush does the same, with the difference that the selection never goes far from where you brush with your mouse. Make sure to do this step by step, since it may require great efforts from your processor. The selection tries to include the whole object you are interested. Auto selection is a mix of the ones just seen, just try it out. All the selection tools seen can be adjusted in sides and options above. These may change between a tool and another. Use them to make your selection more precise. When you select the image, you can cut or copy it using Ctrl and X and Ctrl and C. The checkboard appearing always represents vacant spaces, so areas where there is nothing. You can paste using Ctrl and V. The pasted part won't belong to the original image anymore, as you can see through the layers window. A layer is a collection of objects, represented on the left of its name. There are different kinds of layers, although they basically behave the same way. These layers are used to rule the objects better, especially under a visibility point of view. In fact, all the objects belonging to a layer upper in the list are shown above others. The pasted image will be put below the original one, in case its layer goes below the original layer. You can change the position of a layer selecting it and pulling it up or down. On the left you have two icons. The eye simply hides or shows the whole layer. An hidden layer hides all its objects inside. And any effect applied on a layer will affect anything inside, remember it. Layers that welcome external images are called raster layers. You can recognize them through the two white sheets icon on the left. This icon is also used to edit the layer. Click once to rename the layer. Double click to open the layer properties window. This lets you add transparency, glow, emboss and any shadows. Try it out. You can use the lock icon above to lock the selected layer. A layer locked is a layer that can't be modified, but can be just moved or hidden. You can delete the selected layer right clicking on it or using the bin button below. Use the small bar on top to set fast the layer's opacity. Below you have many other options to edit your layers. Watch the next video to get more into effects. Let's see how to brush on the image. By default on the right you can find the materials window. Here you can set the kind of brush you want to apply, a pattern or a simple solid color. You can choose two sets of colors. Click on the color you like to set it as a foreground material appearing on the upper square and right click on a second color to set a background material, the other square. You can use the dropper tool to select a color from the image itself. A simple brush tool is represented by the paint brush tool. Simply click and drag to start. If you use your left click, you will colorize using the foreground color. If you use the right click, you will use the background one. On top, as always, you can set all the right settings for your brush. Airbrush does the same, with the difference that the brush is more like a spray. The more you hold on a point, the more color will be dropped there. For more advanced brushes, use the last icon in the list. 
You can choose different materials and options through the mixer window that appears auto. These advanced brushes create a new layer on top called the Art Media Layer, indicated through an icon with a sort of brush on it. This collects the brushes made through Paint Shop, so that if you don't want this on your image, you can simply hide or delete this layer. Another tool that gives color is the Flood Fill tool. This simply drops the foreground or the background color on a whole area where the color is more or less the same. Color Changer changes the color selected. Click on a kind of color. The foreground or background color will take over the one where you clicked on. Remember that the area affected is always the selected one for any kind of tool. If no area is selected, the whole image will be affected. Picture Tube tool is a special brush that pastes images directly according to the preset you choose on top. Then you have the Eraser tools that delete the pixels brushing on. The Art Eraser deletes the brushes in the Art Media layers. The Eraser tool deletes pixels in the Raster layers, so the pixels of the image itself. You can use this tool to apply some feather too. Let's see the Vector layers. These are layers that have objects that aren't composed by pixels unless when you save the image. This includes lines, shapes, curves and text created by the software. The vector layers are indicated through two sorts of rectangles in white. They usually contain inside and separately each shape and path you are going to create. You can see them clicking on the small arrow on the left of the layer. They can be managed normally, like the layers just seen. The Preset Shape tool creates shapes according to the settings above. The filling gets the background color set at the moment. To draw personalized shapes or lines, activate the Pen tool. On top, tick Connect Segments and Show Notes. Go on clicking to set new notes that will be the anchors of the shape. This will be closed auto using the background color for the filling. Click and drag to change any time the position of each node. Use the edit mode on top to edit better your shape. Hold the control down to delete the node interested. When you see a merge word appearing below your pointer after selecting the anchor interested. Right click and go to node type to set a curve. An handle will appear to make you edit the curve added. Practice. The shapes created through the presets shape tool are paths exactly like the ones created through the pen tool. Simply select them through the vector layer to see the related anchors and curves. The vector shapes can be easily managed with the pick tool. Click on the shape to select it. Click and drag to move. Drag the small squares to adjust the sides. Approach the squares to rotate. Press Ctrl and X to cut or delete the object selected. You can apply this tool to any kind of layer, even the raster ones or the art media ones. To add some text, simply choose the text tool. Click to set to where the text must start. The text will have the background color set and the font and size set through the options above. You can add some stroke, they will use always the foreground color. I hope you enjoyed this video, check the next one, 
to go into effects and professional editing. Bye bye.